Hey, Scott Austin here. I'm going to be reviewing your site. Looked at it for a little bit. Um, I'm just going to start off with the first thing I was thinking after looking at it. I'm a big fan of what I say, riches and niches, right? So find a small focused subject and go deep in it, become an expert, you know, own that space. And I've never, I don't think I've ever said this to a Shopify store owner, but I think your niche might be too small. Um, and that I might be wrong in that, right? But I'll show you some data here and then we can go from there, right? So, you know, let's just say that, um, I don't know what percentage of Americans, and you're only shipping in the United States, in continental United States, right? I don't know what percentage of Americans own a dog. Let's actually search for that. Uh, what percentage of U.S. households have a dog? 44%, so that's quite a bit. Um, and let's actually look at um, number of U.S. households. 131, right? So what we've got is... I'm trying to... I'm on another screen over here. 131 million, right? Times 44% is 57 million dogs or households with dogs, right? And then I found out that uh, 6% of registered, which is, you know, 6% of registered dogs are, are English bulldogs in the United States. That's this right here. Um, so let's just take this number and multiply it times 6%. And now we're at 3.4 million. And I'm going to guess, so right now I'm trying to figure out how many how many bulldogs are there in the United States, right? And I'm going to say that, you know, the number of registered animals is like one-third the total number of animals because there's lots of mutts out there, right? Um, and a lot of people don't care about registered. I actually have three chihuahuas surrounding me right now. Two of them are probably pure chihuahuas, and one is a chihuahua-pomeranian mix, and, you know, none of them are, are registered and couldn't care less about that kind of stuff. But, so, but the thing I'm thinking about is how many... Bulldogs. Let's just say there's a million bulldogs. Just a, a number I'm coming up with, right? I just wanted to show you the math as, as I put that together. Now, a million sounds like a lot. Um, but a bulldog lives on average 8 to 10 years, right? And once I get, you know, a sign, you know, the bulldog sign, I probably don't need that many more of them. It, it'd be, you know, you know, if I had two or three of them, it, it becomes a lot because they're, they're so dominant and, you know, they're large, they're, they're metal, they're strong. Um... So I'm not going to be repeat purchase through that often, and like I said, a million sounds like a lot, but to you know to get to a million you know people and talk to them all, like what percentage have a house versus an apartment, how many want a big metal sign, all that kind of stuff, it ends up becoming a really small population that you know is going to be interested in your product. Let's say out of that million, maybe two hundred fifty thousand would actually consider purchasing it. Well. Um, once again, 250,000 seems like a lot, right? Let's just put this number in. 250,000, one, two, three, times a 4% conversion rate equals 10,000 sales. And if your average is, let's just say, $60 per order, you know, $600,000, right? That's enough, you know, money for a couple of years, right? Um, so that, that market opportunity is really small. I don't think I've ever come across a store that is this niche, all right? Like I said, you you could actually become really good at marketing to this audience. Maybe there's organizations and meetups and whatever, and, you know, you get to talk to all these owners and all that kind of stuff. But that, you know, be that as it may. Now, here's here's the thing. When I look at your store, um, the first thing I think is, I'm not going to tell you the first thing I think. I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Um, but when I look at your store, there's two things that you're doing here, right? One is you're passionate about a topic, bulldogs. Two, you're an expert in a process, right? And that is creating these, I don't know if you're using plasma cutters or, you know, high-powered lasers, whatever you're doing to, to cut these out. Um, 
but you, there's a process that you're an expert in um, also, right? So do you have to only combine your expertise with your passion? Or can your passion be a subset of what you're doing with your expertise, right? In other words, what if you had, you know, dog signs, right? Or, or house signs or, you know, whatever kind of thing. Um, I do like the idea of focusing, right? Not just being everything to everybody. But what if it was, you know, we make dog signs and here we are. Here's our top 10 dogs. You know, here's a German Shepherd and, you know, here's a French Poodle and whatever, whatever th those things are. And, you know, Bulldogs is one of those, right? Because um, I, so just think about that, right? Um, and then the, the other thing is how many people who have um, a bulldog or any pet, right, um, would want one of these signs? Um, and I, I've had 10 chihuahuas, eight chihuahuas maybe in the past 10 years. Um, love chihuahuas, have them all the time. I always have a pack of them. You know, I got three right now, down from four from last year. Um, and, and I'm not your target audience at all, because I'm, I'm a cheap bastard, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of weird about things. But I wouldn't get um, a big house sign with my dog's name on it, right? Now, this one here, for example, where it's just the number, maybe you could do, maybe that makes sense. But, like, this one here, where I've got the dog's names on it, just because, you know, Bulldogs don't live that long. You know, you get eight to ten years out of them kind of thing. Um, I actually think this one's funny, by the way. Um, the French and English. Um, I just wonder, like, you know, like when I look at this, right, is this supposed to be I'm buying this because I have two Bulldogs? Or I'm buying this because me and my partner, um, I just don't understand who's going to buy these. You know, like I said, the street sign ones, the house sign ones, I, I get those. But this one, I don't understand who's going to buy that. I don't understand who's going to buy this. Um, I think this is funny, but, um, like, is this supposed to be we're the Pattersons? And, you know, we're two different, you know, we're, we're a husband and wife or we're a couple from different places. And this is how we come together, you know, and showing how our diversity in our relationship. Or is this about I have both of those dogs? So... And like this one here, um, and showing it over the, the stove, right? Like, who's going to put a sign like that with a dog bone over their stove? And if you don't put it there, where do you put it? Um, so I would love to understand, like, by the way, that, that's a nice sign, too. I like that. Um, I would like to understand who is your target audience? Who has purchased this? Like, have you sold 100 of these yet? And if you have, what are they buying? What, what products are they buying? Where are they putting them, right? I'd love to see photos of them in situations where people actually use them, right? So I'm just looking at them all here. It's just like, yeah. So, so I think it's too niche. And I think it's not the right use case or scenarios. Most of them aren't the right scenarios for this material and size and dominance of the art that you're creating, right? Um, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Hopefully, I, I bounce around a lot on these things. I might come back and harp on this again, but let, let's leave that as it may. I just wonder if you're too focused, right? So now here's the, the first thing I noticed when I came to your website. You don't have a photo of your, your product, All right? So metal wall art for, for bulldog people, and I've got this uh, Photoshop thing, right? Um, Photoshop, 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 Photoshop. Let's see if I can find a photo. Um, that one's got a shadow effect. It might be real or it just might be a good Photoshop, right? I don't think too many of these are real. I don't think any of them are real. Um, and maybe they are. Like some of these look really flat like this one. 
or some have a little bit of depth to them, but I don't think any of them are real. So um, if you're trying to sell a product, let's just look at this one here. It's $49. So this is 50 bucks. Um, the expensive one is 228. You know, you only spent $228 on something and you haven't even made one yet to, to show, right? So I would recommend that you actually create your products and take photography of them so I can actually see what it looks like, right? And, and like, I don't think I noticed, like I said, I, I'm not the expert eye on what's Photoshop and what's not. But it looked to me like everything was photoshopped, um, and you know, you want me to spend two hundred and fifty bucks on something, but you haven't even you know printed one out yet, kind of thing. Like, see with that shadow effect. I don't know. I mean, it's not a shadow effect. Hey, there's a shadow, effect. but I don't think this is real. Um, and I, like, I might be wrong, right? I might be wrong on that, but. Uh, And, you know, the, the also showing the photos and the same, you know, put them in real situations. Like, is someone really going to put this, you know, as the backsplash to their, their stove? And maybe they are, right? But this comes back to the who's buying these and what situations are they putting them in? Be realistic about that instead of a staged photo that is stock photography with something applied on top of it. Now, when you start, right, you got to do that. Um but, you know, think about what your premier product is right now, what you think your number one seller is going to be or already is, and then create that, you know, those photo assets, the real legitimate, authentic ones, so people can see what they look like in real life. You know, I would also show, you know, how they come packaged, right? So this thing is, you know, 36 inches in size. Um, so it's going to be, that's big, right? How are you going to make sure it's protected and doesn't get bent in shipping? You know, show it, show the box that it comes in, show how it's shipped. You know, also, you know, show me the backside of it. Like I saw somewhere that the, uh, yeah, mounting hardware not included. Okay, so you tell me that, but what does it take to mount one of these things? Like, am I just, well, how do, how do you mount one, right? Is it just hooks? Is it a hanger? Is it, is it you know, bolts? Like, you know, let people know, like, I'm going to invest in my home decor with this big, massive, dominating piece of art. Let me know what, how much work that's going to take um, for me to, to do that kind of thing. So here I'm looking at the product pages. I personally like um, these, these product options to be all listed out so people don't have to click to see what the options are. Um, but your theme may not allow you to do that. But, but I like to show them all... Um, just right, right there without them having to click. I, I like the fact that you're, um, you're, you're doing this. Yeah, I can type in my thing, but there's no limit to it, right? And even if you don't have code that protects the, you from having them type in 20 characters, you might want to say 20 characters, right? H how many characters are you allowed? A little, little thing here. Um, let's see what happens when I add that to the cart. All right, so it, it saves that all. That's good. All right, so I personally like the Add to Cart button to be a red, bright thing. So it's the... Because your branding, you've got this, this brown and green, which is very organic and homey kind of thing. Um... You're a little too dominant with it, I think. It's too much, but that's it's not that bad. Um, but the only point is, I would make sure that the add to cart button is a clear call to action, like in, in like a red, like, you know, this kind of red color here kind of thing, so that it's obvious to people, you know, because there's a lot of green and tan on this page. So then they would know that, you know, this is the button that gets you what you want to do. Um I don't see any reason to show a skew on this page. Um, now let's let's look at your Bulldog Love Story. So that's the name of the product, Bulldog Love Story Metal Art. Okay. Um, presenting the Bulldog Love Story Metal Sign, the perfect gift for the. So this is a gift. I doubt that's true. I doubt anybody would buy one of these for someone else. Um, it seems like such a personal thing, right? So. 
once again, anytime I'm wrong in any of this stuff, just ignore me, right? Um, you're, you're, you should know your customers better than I do, but I'm just taking guesses at things, right? But, but what you want to do, right, is you want to get in the mindset of the purchaser, right? And the first thing you say, it's a perfect gift for the couple whose hearts are filled with love for English Bulldogs. Gift sounds to me like I'm going to buy it for somebody else as opposed to I'm one of those two people in the couple, right? Um, so you know, write this in, in, in the right frame of mind for who the purchaser is and what, what their experience is. Crafted with durability in mind, this metal sign is suitable for both indoor and outdoor display, allowing the couple to showcase their love for English Bulldogs in any space. This thoughtful and personalized gift is not just a decorative piece, but a celebration of the couple's affection for each other and their beloved English Bulldogs. Yeah, see, this doesn't explain to me whose name is that. Is that the dogs or the people's, right? It's over our bed. Like, I, I don't know. Um, so... I like the fact you're trying to tell a, tell a story here instead of just specs, right? Um, but I, I would do a better job at that and double down on, on really telling the story of who's buying it, for what purpose, and, and where are they doing it. Um, all right. The product is made especially for you as soon as you place your order, which is why it takes a bit longer to deliver to you. I just don't like the way that sentence is written. Uh, making products on demand helps to reduce overproduction. So pause to you for making thoughtful purchasing decisions. See, that's, that's BS, right? That's just rhetoric you're throwing in there for the sake of throwing in rhetoric, right? Um, the reality is you're producing this because it's personalized, right? So you're not going to make it till they order it because it's personalized. So the whole... Making products on demand helps to reduce overproduction, so pause to you for making thoughtful purchasing decisions. Once again, that rhetoric is just bad. The, the, the English in this is not good. Um, I don't know if English is your first language or, or second. It actually feels like it's your second language. And, and if it is, that's, you know, that is. That's not, it's just a, you know, not a big deal. I would just have someone read through the copy and clean it up a little bit. Um, but, you know... They're, they're not buying this because it reduces overproduction, right? That is not a value prop for this product. So wasting time, even saying that, just a waste of time, right? Um, more important would be, you know, here's five different places that you can use this sign. Here's what it looks like over, you know, over the, in, on the porch. Here's what it looks like, you know, in the living room. Here's what it looks like in the den, you know, those kind of things. Let people see this product in their home, in their lives, as opposed to, you know, rhetoric for the sake of rhetoric. And then I also think it's a really confusing, right? It took me a while to realize that this is your dog's name, right? Um, and, and I think you're trying to be too cute. Well, not trying to be too cute. Here's the problem with being cute. Same thing with being funny. It's really hard to do when people don't care, right? And, and by don't care, I don't mean that they don't care about your products. What I mean is when someone's looking at the website and they're going to buy one of these things, they're not going to read three or four pages, which is how many pages I had to read before I understood that Isabella was the dog, right? They're not going to catch on to that. So it's just going to be a little bit confusing to them, right? And, and I, I literally, the first time I saw this, I'm like, so Isabella is the woman that owns this company and she wants to give me sloppy kisses. Like I was confused, right? Um... So it's hard to be cute is my only point. And, and I, I wouldn't do that here, right? Because I think one of the things you want to be stressing, right? You even call this art, right? And here's the thing. Art comes from artist. And I think you need to talk about the artist a lot, a lot, right? Like who drew this thing, right? And, and who came up with the design and what, what is the craftsmanship that's going to go into making it and all that kind of stuff? We're going to talk about that a little bit when I get to the About Us page, right? So this, I love, right? I love it showing the different options. All right, it'd be nice if you could actually put color swatches up here, but your theme may not allow you to do that. Um, I also love this. I would make one of these for every sign, right? You're already the Photoshop expert, so I would have this sign, right, be here, but you also might want to throw in a dimension of the couch, right? Is that a 90-inch couch or is it a 78-inch couch? Those kind of things. 
Um, this, once again, just trying to be cute for the sake of being cute, doesn't help me make a decision right now. Um, I'm not a fan of You May Also Like. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we get up to the collections. But, you know, when someone gets down to the product page, they should be confident that this is what they want to talk about. We shouldn't be merchandising other things that are competitors or, or you know, siblings to that same product. Um, this looks like the Judge Me Review app. Let me just check here. Yeah, that is Judge Me. Um, the Judge Me Review app can be turned off on the product page if you have no reviews. Um, there's a setting that, that does not allow people to place a review if they have not placed an order. It's something worded like that. And that hides this because right now you're allowing people to leave a review, but they've never placed a purchase. So turn that setting off. And then the reviews won't show on this page until there's actually reviews, right? Which would be a nice thing. Now, these are nice, right? But I would also think about putting them up higher, right? Those are value props. You know, usually I do those as product seals right here. Um, let me think if I have an example of a product seal. Let's see what rep the chips got. Yeah, see, we got, the, we got the product seals right up here by the add to cart button, right? And the, those things you had were pretty good, you know, value props for product seals. And by the way, I'm purposely just trashing your site, right? There's a lot of good stuff here. I, I can tell some, some people put some time and energy into making this, but I'm here to help you make it better. So I'm, I'm not going to, like, spend the whole day talking about how great it is. I'm just going to tell you all the things that you can improve upon. So apologies for being very blunt. Um... So these, you know, could be value props or product seals that are up a little higher. A little less words, a little more images, right? Um, so that's a product page. Now let's go to another product page. And here's where things go awry. So I'm going to click on this one. And this is where I see that this whole section down here is generic, right? It's not specific to this product, right? So that's why we can't have this photo be unique for each of the products because this you're using one template for all your products. Now you could do that. You could still use one template for all your products. Just use meta fields to have a different image for each product and that kind of stuff. A little more advanced, but you might want to think about how can you do something like that with meta fields to, to enrich this. Um, now you don't have any custom reviews yet, which is hard. Um, you also don't, because you know, reviews will help out a lot once you start getting those in. Um, let me just see this here. Let's see if I change my color. All right, you've got variant level images. That's good. You know, as you get more and more advanced, you'll actually, you know, show this type of photo here with just the 24 inch one, right? When they select red 24, uh, you'll show the red 24 on the wall, but you know, next to a chair or something like that. So they can get a feel for the size kind of thing. But you know, that's pretty advanced stuff. Um, yeah, see this, this content, is this all the same? So yeah, this is all the same as on the other product. Yeah, so um, I, I like your stories. Like I, you're, you're in the right direction there. Now, on this one, right, because you're cutting this out, you're doing subtractive manufacturing here. So, you know, this font, right, whatever font you're using here, you have to use that font or a font like it so you don't get the circle that falls out kind of thing. So you might want to explain um, a little bit about the fonts because – do I get to choose any font choice here? Like, see, this one's different than this one. Or am I stuck with, 
and stuck isn't a bad thing, but you should just explain like fonts. You know, you're going to get this here, this font kind of thing, and you might want to show that font set. You know, you know, just an image of you know, here's here's all the numbers of this of that we're using. Or if they get to choose from two or three different font choices, and I wouldn't do more than two or three. Um, and I would make those two or three very different, right? A sans, a serif, and an artistic or something like that. Um, I, I would let customers know those kind of details, right? And just like you got down here, you know, stuff about colors and sizes, you might have something about fonts also. So your products, oh, I didn't want the about, sorry. So you got this niche, you're all about bulldogs, and then you throw in a curveball where this thing, right? Now, I saw somewhere that you're a veteran, so maybe this was the battalion you were in or something like that, um, but that's just out of left field. Uh, but that's an example of you have a skill set, a craftsmanship and an art, you know, you're an artist and a craftsman, and you can use that in different ways, right? The only thing we think about is, you know, we go to our catalog. The problem we have on this, well, first of all, I wouldn't have a header up here, uh, the banner. Just, I, I want to see products, and, and this is just in my way when I want to do that. Now, I like banner images on about pages and contact, but not on um, shopping pages. Um, and your collection pages are a shopping page. Now, on this page here, you're not helping your customers... Did you go portrait with all your images? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're all the same size. That's nice. Um, yeah, and by the way, Isabella's favorites of the day, is that going to change on a daily basis, you know, kind of thing? And, you know, why why do you have that? Um, and once again, this is, a, this is a shopping page. You know, let's not try to entertain people with this kind of stuff. Um... But here, right, on this page here, it would be nice if you classified things for me. You do that somewhere, like on the home page. See if I can find it. Um, yeah, family name signs, house number signs, bully name signs, uh, military signs. Great. You got those buckets. So when I go to the shop now, it'd be nice if you either had filters, and there's a free filter app from Shopify that works really good for this, really good for this. Um, I actually did a podcast episode on it recently. Um, or you could just, you know, show those, you know, have four collections. One is house signs, one is bully signs, one is, you know, military signs or something like that and bucketize them. So let your customers be able to compare, you know, things that are, should be compared, right? These are the different house signs and there's two models or three models or 17 models. But right now I'm like, all right, here's a house sign. There's a house sign. There's a house sign. Um, so three of them, it looks like, have house numbers, right? But I got to scroll through the whole list to figure that out. Up oh, four. Four of them do, right? When, if they were all side by side or in one grouping, that would help me look at it and go, oh, I like this one or over that one kind of thing instead of going back up and down, up and down kind of thing. So on this page here, give your customers... Um, some tools like filters or just bucketize them in collections to allow them to see the different categories, right? Which, you know, let's go up to your, your top nav here for a minute. I'm a big believer that in the top nav, the only things that should be up here are um, shopping links. So contact is not shopping. FAQ is not shopping. I personally think gift cards are unnecessary in your store. Right now, if you're on the Shopify plan, uh, the $79 a month or whatever it costs these days, um, that gives you gift cards. You could probably get rid of gift cards, save yourself 50 bucks a month, and downgrade to the $29 a month plan because um, that's all you get in that, that upper plan at, your, at, at the small volume of sales you're doing. Right There's a credit card benefit, a credit card rate benefit for the $79 a month plan. But uh, my guess is because you haven't reviews yet, you're not, you're not doing that many sales yet. So... Um, you could get rid of gift cards, save yourself 50 bucks, but in your top level, you could have, instead of home, about us, contact, FAQ, and gift card, get rid of all of those. Maybe the about us, we'll talk about that again. Um, but at your catalog, you could break that out, right? You could have 
house numbers. You could have bully signs. You could have family signs. You could have military signs as your top level categories so that people can easily see what their four choices are. Here's the type of signs they have, right? And Or you may have in the future, you may have English bulldogs, French bulldogs, golden retrievers, right? That kind of thing. Um, but having everything under one link, right? And then you know, on your homepage, we say, hey, shop now. It takes me here, right? We also say browse. It takes me there again, right? So we're, we're not helping people move down the funnel with tools and, and links and merchandising. But, you know, you, you can add that easily. Um, so we were looking at the collection page. There's only one collection page, so I think that's going to be enough feedback. Um, these are really big, right? Well, so I don't like the docking header. You see when I scroll, you still got your header. And the reason for that is, so let's take this blue background Patterson one here, right? I can barely get that whole image and I can't get the image, right? And I got to scroll right to the thing to see what the price is, the name and the image. And this is just taking up real estate up here, right? Um, there's there's no need to, to keep that docked all the time. And let's see what this looks like with these portrait and portrait is, photos are bold, by the way. Um, Every time I do stores like that, I usually do it for fashion, right? Because the models are standing up kind of thing. Um, but let's go in and look at this on mobile and see what it looks like. Nope. Let's go back to our mobile view there. Refresh. I like the search there, but you really don't have enough products to search for yet. Um, and then this this big band stays there the whole time, right? Um, so that I can barely see one full product per screen kind of thing. Um, so I just get rid of the, the docking header. It's kind of weird that um, you know this photo's cropped. That we crop out a little bit of the image to keep the door in place. That's just a design decision, right? Same thing here. Let's actually go into one of those and uh, see what you've got for imagery. Oh, is your theme? So you got square images. Your theme is just presenting them as portrait. Am I accurate in that, or is that a? That's weird. See, I can't scroll and and see if that was a what type of image that was. Yeah, I can't scroll on that one. See, that looks like a portrait image, and it's cut off at the bottom here, which is weird, right? So usually what we do is we do square images and everything because it's a nice compromise for, between desktop and, and mobile. Where mobile wants to be more portrait, desktop wants to be more, more landscape. You make everything um, square, and it's just, a, it's just an even trade-off because... Yeah, see, I... I not a fan of these images at all with this slat background thing because it just uh, you know this does not look like a metal sign standing off of the wall kind of thing but I, I would think about going square on your images just because it looks like your theme is doing some funky stuff on cropping stuff i'm not a fan of images being cropped by themes i like to know exactly or being control of what the customer is going to see, right? But I'm kind of a dictator about things. Um, so that was your collections. Let's look at some of your footer links if you have any contact, privacy. So you got policies. That's the boilerplate policy, which your template is really bad at that, by the way. And what I mean by that is. You know, th th this here is smaller than this here, right? 
Um, but that's probably just the theme doing that, not you. Let's see if we can see what theme you're using. Um, uh, I've got a screen open on the other. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I just want to see if I can... up here, control F, theme, got a lot of theme files here, icon, okay, I don't know who makes the icon theme. So it's available in the Shopify store. That's cool. So as long as your theme's in the Shopify theme store and not gotten from some third-party place, it should be, you know, it's, it's decent. It may not be the best one, but, you know, it's not one. There's some crappy ones out there. I just want to make sure you didn't have one of the crappy ones. Um, so we were looking at... Yeah, in total, small thing, right? So we got this fave icon up here. I would make it just the dog's face, right, without the bully belly above it so it's a little more obvious what it is kind of thing um so we were looking at our pages the privacy page Con let's look at contacts so Come February 1st, 2024, so a month from now, using a Gmail account for your business is going to really, really hurt you, right? Um, you're going to need to have an email under your Bully Belly domain really soon because there's new policies coming from uh, Google and Yahoo, and they're just going to consider this spam and, and, and really penalize you for that. And by the way, right, so I came to this page. So this, this stuff here, right, I thought that was on the product page. It looks like it's on every page, so it's probably part of your footer. Um, let's actually just look at your um, collection page again. All right? Is it on the bottom there? Yep. So it's it's on all of your pages, I guess. So it's part of your footer. So and the reason I bring that up is, oh, is that a, that's a different contact page? So that's pages contact here. Oh, that's your contact information one. Oh, that's the new policy thing from Shopify. Yeah, I wouldn't, I would not use the policy one there like that. Um, I would have, you know, and I told you before, I wouldn't have any of these links up here except for catalog. So I would take contact, replace this one with that contact. What I like to do is at least two menus, right? At, in the footer. One is more bully belly. And that would be about us, contact, FAQ, those kind of things, blog, if you have those. And the other one is policies. And I would put in the shipping policy, the return policy, the privacy policy, and the terms of use, right? So right now you have returns, shipping. You got all four. I would get rid of the contact one. Um, and I, I wouldn't put search in there because you've already got search up here. Um, interestingly, search is more dominant on mobile than it is on desktop. That just might be the way the theme works. Um, so let's look at the, the real contact page then. Um, you know, here, here's one where, you know, we're going to do a cute little photo, right? Nothing wrong with that. Set a little tone, right? But we've cropped the dogs half their heads out, right? So it's just a bad design decision. And it, it might be your theme is just doing that automatically on you. And let's actually see if different size screens look different. So where it comes back to like I don't like themes ever modifying my images because I like to know exactly what I'm getting um, so that things like that don't happen right so what I'm going to do here so I'm just going to go to responsive and just yeah see there it looks good right and then there you know I start getting cropped and it gets worse right so the theme is just doing some things it wants to do that annoy me because we have an unpredictable experience 
And that unpredictable experience leads to a bad experience. Like, I think that's bad, right? Um, now, your contact page, that's fine. I, I would also put in some information here, like um, where you're located, right? Um, I assume you're an American company. That is always a plus when you're talking to Americans. Um, just because, you know, it's not cheap Chinese crap or whatever kind of thing. So if you're, you're located in America, I would, I would you know, say that I like to show a map, right? So let's go back to these guys here. Um, I always show a map, and I always zoom out to the ocean so people can tell where on the map that is. So if we go to the Contact Us, JT's in Texas. All right, so he's got his, he's probably got his Google business listing. Nope, not a, he didn't have a Google business listing, but you can see I, I zoomed out so you can see he's in San Antonio, and there's a Gulf of Mexico kind of thing. So people go, oh, they're an American company kind of thing. Um, you also want to throw in, you can throw in your social stuff. You can also throw in some, you know, a phone number and an email address, not just, you know, the box there, you know, with, with no text around it kind of thing. But that's also probably a function of what your theme allows, too. So your FAQ, cute little photo. I don't like the pause things on the side, but you probably need to do that for cropping reasons. It's really hard to get really wide banners. Um, so you got some Q and A's. That's fine. So now about us. About us, I think is super, super important, right? And you could have multiple abouts, right? You can have one about about the team, which should only be about the humans, right? And, and I'm not trying to say you can't talk about your dogs and that, but my, it's about it's about the people and the humans at this at the store. And in your case, you can you can you know if you want to include the dogs in that, that's totally fine. But you can have another about that's about like the process. Here's how we make these products. Regardless of which one of these signs you purchase, here's here's what it is. Like if you've got a professional looking manufacturing facility, you want to show that, right? Um, if you're doing this in the basement, then you might want to not want to show that, but you might want to show like you at a farmer's market displaying and selling some of your wares or something like that, right? So, and here's the other thing I mentioned before is you're an artist in this story here, right? And I believe that artists, artists are part of the product. So for you, it's about the artist, not about us. And because you're part of the product, your about can also be in the header. So let's go to um, Viz Art Inc. He does pen line drawings, as you can see here, right? And you can see right up here, we've got an about the artist in the uh, the header. And you can see, you know, about Viz, he shows himself, there's, he's given a talk, um, he's with the news, he's given another talk, you know, all this other kind of stuff. He's displaying his art, he's kind of crazy, right? So there's this real human story that we're putting down there um, for him to talk about. Another one is, oh, I'm having a hard time remembering her name. Oh, Marcy. Marcy Rule Art, right there. Nope, it didn't, didn't take that. This is another store I built. And... You can see we have Meet the Artist right up here. And in that, Marcy tells her story, right? She had different phases that her art has gone through. She started off doing golf courses and then sports. And now she lives in San Diego. Oh, she doesn't show her ocean ones anymore. And she started doing more ocean stuff. Um, but, you know, she's got photos of her doing her art, selling her art, right? And the whole thing, you know, she tells the, the story kind of thing. So you can resonate with that so for you right there there's an about which is about the artist and there might be another one that's about the process so people know how these things are made you may not you don't have to do that but you definitely need the one about the people um and tell that story right because you, you need to give your art street cred like so if and i don't know what the case is here right so let's go to one of your pieces of art so just pick this one here. 
is this your design or is this, you know, a stock gallery line drawing that you pulled out, right? Because if it's original and it's your design, you're going to want to emphasize that. Um, oh, I see. I'm just looking at the, the different input boxes. I hadn't seen this page before. Um, so, you know, if they're your designs, they're original and all that kind of stuff, you know, you're going to highlight that. As opposed to, you know, if it's just stock stock images you downloaded, then you're not going to, you know, say that, of course. But if it is original, you do want to say that. Um, and that goes back to you being an artist kind of thing. So I think your about page um, needs to be about you and your process, your craftsmanship, your artistry, where this all came from. Um, now... Let's go back to your home page. Uh, I've been critical so far. I'm going to be hypercritical here, right? Um, I'm not a fan of your brand. And by brand, I don't mean the bully belly or the logo. I actually like this. I'm not a fan of the way it's been implemented in your store. So, and here's why I say this right here. I've got this black and white, um, Stark contrast, right, going on there, uh, kind of fits in with the, you know, laser cut or plasma cut metal fabrication that you're doing, right? It feels strong and solid. And then I've got this, so and it's black, and I'm going to say white, even though, the, you know, the background here is tan, right? But here I can see, you know, we're not using the tan up here. But then the rest of the store has this green, red, tan color palette behind it that doesn't tie in to that. The green, red, yellow, or tan color palette isn't bad. It's actually good. I'd say you're using a little too much color, personally, right? I would have all the text be black kind of thing. But it also, because this red is a little bit lighter and the tan underneath is a little bit darker, um, there's a contrast issue. It's not that bad here, but there's a reason that 90% of the time when we do stores, maybe 95% of the time, we do black text, and that might be 000 black. In your case here, well, this is probably 000. Let's actually see. Pull up a color picker. Yeah, you got 000 in your logo, right? But then I saw a black down here. That's what, a 333 here? No, uh, it's a two, 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 one, two, one, right? So, you know, it's a little bit uh, flatter. So, you know, that doesn't match the logo. So we've got this softer, gentler color palette that is not in line with the color palette from the logo, right? And the logo, in my mind, is very, you know, I, I can see the plasma cutter cutting these lines and it's straight and all that kind of stuff. But then I go to this font, and I have no idea why this font is used here, right? It looks like it's spray-painted on this stucco wall kind of thing. Um, so it, th it seems like things were done for the sake of doing things. They weren't done for the sake of adding up to a tight brand story, right? Because I actually, I, I like the idea... Because here's what I'm thinking about when I, I think about what you're what you're doing here, right? Is because you're using subtractive processes, it's it's just a binary, right? Either there's metal there or there's not, and it's all one color, right? It's not like Marcy has where she's got this rich color palette that she's using making these paintings, right? Um, yours is is more stark, more hard, more more even cold. And I don't mean that as a negative, just an, an is, right? Um, but your color palette is very warm and welcoming. It just doesn't map to this, right? This doesn't feel like like this. Um, like I said, that's that's overcritical. Um, but I did want to say that because, yeah, so even here, right? So I've got this red color here. And I scroll, and now it's a it's a different color, 
You know, there's effects for this, the sake of effects, right? Why did those colors change just because I scrolled? Right? That, that does not make sense to me. Um, so you, you don't want to do things for the sake of doing things. You want to do things because it communicates something, right? I'm like, this is red text. This is white text on a black background. This is brown text over the image. Now I got, I don't know if that's green or, or so here's red. And I think this is green. It might be black. Let's just see. Um, let's see if I can see a color there. It's kind of a greenish black. Okay. It's a uh, 364035. Um, oh, you can't see that. It was right there. Right. And that's a different color than I had for this. This was a 222121 right here. This is a 0000, zero, 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 zero. And then this is that whatever I just said. Um, oh, that was this text here. So there's all these different colors that are just put out there, right? So what I like to do just to, to show you a way to do it is let's just go once again to here. We're going to go to brand guidelines. What I do for my clients is I make them a brand guidelines page, if I could spell it properly. Um, and, you know, we document you know, what their logos are, what their colors are. So on their website, if I've done things properly, the only colors you're going to see anywhere on that website are these, right? Um, for, you know, for elements that we're defining in HTML kind of stuff. Um, we also talk about what fonts we're going to use. So this just gives us, a, you know, some documentation we go back to so that we consistently implement, right? Because I always forget, oh, what are we doing for this? What are we doing for that? We just go back to this page like, oh, here, here's the different shades of tan that we have, right? Here's the different shades of orange. Here's the different browns we're using. And if I'm going to add a new color in, like maybe I want a darker brown, I'm going to document that here and then use it on the website, All right? So it's nice to have define your brand guidelines so that it helps you implement them consistently. Because here's the thing about branding is it's the consistency that becomes important consistency even if your customers don't realize it consciously subconsciously they can see what's consistent and what's not consistent most people can right so the fact that you know these lines and stuff and fonts and colors are different than these that just shows a lack of consistency which just means this store hasn't thought about it as tightly as a store that has thought about it and has things done more consistently right so that is that. So I saw somewhere it was on a product page. So let's go into a product here. Yeah, these stupid share icons, right? Oh, and it, this has a white background. That's nice. See a little bit better contrast. I would still have this be black. I would have this be black, right? Um, and like having this, well... There's no right or wrong there. But these buttons, right, nobody shares anymore. Nobody's shared in 20 years now, right? Or maybe literally 15 years, right? So every, web, every theme still gives us these share buttons. Stupidest thing on the planet because no one uses them ever. So, you know, just clear that clutter off your website. Now let's look at your social presence. So you got an Instagram... Yeah, I still don't think that's a real photo. I don't know if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, so your Instagram is your dogs, right? Which makes a little bit of sense. Um, but I would also throw in a little bit of the, you're doing some of the business in here, right? So don't just be about the dogs, right? You want to be about your business, also, um, and, and mixing those two in would be a good thing, right? You know, the dogs give you the other. Oh, that's adorable. That is totally adorable. <laughs> I love dogs. Um, so, yeah, you just want to you just want to make sure your products in there. Also, you're doing that. Just you know you don't want to you want to make sure you you do it. It's, you know. So that's that one. Let's look at a couple of your other social things. 
Facebook. So you're updating this stuff. This is a day, you know day old, right? So you're putting post up there. Um, I would ask, is that the best use of your time? To be honest, right? Because uh, it's probably not driving a lot of traffic, and even if it's driving traffic, it's probably not driving sales. Let me see how many followers you have here. You have 21 followers here. Um, you've got. Fifty-four followers there, and you have three times as many people you're following than followers. Not a good sign, but that, you know it's a new brand. That's going to happen. Um, I hope this is not Etsy. God, I hope this is not Etsy. Yeah, yeah, you just lost me. Um, so here's the thing: you're going to spend money driving people to your website. You're going to spend hard dollars, right? The last thing you want to do is send them off to your competition, right? And this is your store on Etsy. But I bet you I could find some other bulldog sign, right? Yeah, so there's all these other people, you know, that have signs that aren't yours, right, that I could be buying from. So don't spend time and energy driving people to your website just to send them to a link off of your website. Now, yeah, see, see this? That's the kind of stuff I would expect to see on your website under your About the Process page, right? Here's how we make it. Because people are going to go, because people may not realize how these things are made. And then you show them how it's made. They're like, and this was, this person's doing it on their second photo, right? Their, their, their second photo on their thing. Like, that's fabulous, right? That kind of content. Um, so, yeah, don't don't put up the Etsy one. And I'll see you got on Pinterest. Is this one hour ago you were working on this? Ten hours ago? I, I don't use Pinterest, but... Uh, so here's the thing is right now you're hurting for traffic, right? Which is every new store has that exact same problem. Um, you're not going to get traffic. And this isn't about you. This is about every e-commerce store. You are not going to get traffic early on by building a social following, right? Unless you're Kylie Jenner. Right. Or your uh, I'm trying to Mahomes. Right. He's a quarterback, I think. Right. If, if you're a celebrity, maybe you can do that kind of stuff. Um, but all us average Joes just trying to build websites ain't going to happen. And if it does, great. But it ain't going to happen. Right. It's like lightning in the lottery. It's not going to happen. And all we do is we hear about these stories where it does happen. Like, oh, I'm going to make that happen. Like, no, it's not going to happen. So the point being, as you're trying to drive traffic right now, do less with social. Right. Now, I would, if I was you, uh, put an Instagram feed on your homepage, right? And there's a, there's a free Instagram app that I always use. And, you, you know, you connect to your Instagram account, and it'll show right on your homepage your Instagram account, right? Um, by the way, this is just cluttered here. It's, there's too much going on there. It's hard to tell what's, what's what kind of thing. Um, you know, just like we have a, an unsubscribe here, unsubscribe here, right? We're repeating words. Um, but... Getting traffic to your store is hard. You're going to have to do it with advertising right, to get started. Everybody has to do it with advertising, even, even beyond getting started, right? So I can't tell from this, right? But what you should be investing time and energy in is Google Shopping Ads. Let's actually check that out. So let's um, go to your catalog. And we're going to pull off this product name. So I'm just going to do this, right? This is a good one because it's kind of a unique name. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search for that. So first thing is you better show up number one, right, from an SEO standpoint. We'll see if you do or not, right? Um, no, Etsy beat you because they took this. See, that's a very specific thing. You should show up number one for that. Um, and you're not showing up at all. Oh, wow. Let's go back up here and let's just do, what is it, Bully Belly? So now you're showing up. So your, your store is listed, right? It's indexed inside of Google. But I put in the exact words of your product 
and it didn't rank you for that. That's amazing. But it, it also might be, I don't know how, how new your store is. It does take time to get rankings and that kind of stuff. But you should be showing up number one for this down the road. Once your store has had enough time to bake and settle in with Google, um, that's one of the ways you can check that you're ranking properly because you should dominate for your own term kind of thing. Because let, let's just check, right? So this is Bulldog Metal Sign. None of them say international relations, right? That's what I liked about that product is it's probably fairly unique. Um, now I just want to scroll to see how far I got to go to find you. Let's, um, well, let's try this then. Yeah, you don't show up at all on the first page for your own your own product. Th that I assume is going to fix over time. But if not, like if you've been around for eight months, that's a problem. I don't know what the answer to that is, but it's something to, to look into. Now, the other thing I want to look at here, right, is let's go to our shopping search in Google. And what I want to see is if you're showing up here. You're not. So you what you want to do in your in your Google admin, I think I did a whole podcast episode about this also. You want to get Google Shopping working. Um, you want to connect your Shopify store to Google Shopping. So this, all these things here, they show up. This is free listings here. If there were shopping ads, it'd be at the top, and they don't have ads for this, this query for whatever reason. Um, but these are all free listings that show up. And you can connect your Shopify store to Google. So you have to create a Google merchant account. You have to connect them. It's fairly easy now. It was a lot harder a year ago. It's much easier in, inside of Shopify now. So the first thing I would do for you to start driving traffic is create your Google merchant account, connect your Shopify store to Google merchant using the um, Google channel built into Shopify. You can add it to your Shopify store, right? Connect the two, and then you'll start showing up here. And then you can also start... Um, Let's actually just do this, bulldog wall sign, a little more generic of a term, right? What I want to see is I want to see, yeah, so these are shopping ads. So these are paid for, right? And these are free. They're organic listings. You can get traffic from both. But the second you start showing up here, you can start paying for ads. Now, the really cool thing about that is here in the Google generic search, right? It has determined that the bulldog wall sign is a shopping query, so it is showing shopping ads. And these come from that Google merchant account with the product feed from Shopify. Right? So that's a great place to start advertising to start off with. Right? Um, now, we don't know how popular bulldog wall sign is and those kind of things, but you know this is low-hanging fruit for you to start doing traffic generation. And you combine that with the SEO, figure out what that problem is, and, and you, you've started off. And then you also want to do remarketing ads. When anybody who does come to your website, you're reminding them as they're bouncing across the internet that you still exist, um, and you try to bring them back to the website. But those are low-hanging fruit. You know, no no traffic effort is going to be the one solution. I, I always compare it to this: everything's just a drop. Right? Everything's drops in the, drops of water, and you're just trying to get as many drops as you can because nothing's a waterfall. Right? You're going to have to create your own waterfall by having tons and tons of drops. So you got to do all these, these individual things right. But back to your store, right? how we got started on this. I would add your Instagram feed to your homepage because one of the things that's missing here is your store is not alive. There's no life to it right now. And life can come from customer reviews, right? Once you start getting those, you know, you'll have a customer review section on your homepage, and I'll see, oh, someone just, you know, reviewed this product yesterday or today and all that kind of stuff, right? Your Instagram feed shows a little bit of life because right now, I don't have a lot of confidence that if I place an order, there's actually somebody who's going to fulfill it because there's no heartbeat to this store. I can't see that someone's alive and it's being manned. Now, I can see that by your social stuff, right? I saw that you're posting a lot there. Like I said, I think a little too much. Um, but if you you know keep, keep doing the stuff on Instagram, do less on Facebook and less on Pinterest, take down the Etsy, but put your Instagram feed up here. And then all of a sudden, you know, I can see every day or two when you post something on Instagram, oh, that store is alive. There's something going on there kind of thing, right? And then as you start, you know, 
getting orders coming in, you know, your Instagram post should be, oh, I just made this sign for this person, and they can see, they can see their name on it, the Joneses, and now I'm packaging it up, and you start doing videos and all that kind of stuff, but, you know, but don't spend too much time on social. It's really easy to spend a lot of time that gets no return. But the, I find the valuable part of social is to show that you're alive and a living, breathing company and entity, right? Um, and then it would be nice to have real photos. And so this one has dogs. These dogs look Photoshopped in also, right? I don't know if, yeah, I, I think they're Photoshopped in. I might be wrong on that. It'd be nice if we had some authentic phot photography here. Really nice if we had some authentic photography. Um, and even if you can't do it everywhere, just do it some places to start, right? And what I did for a store, we're still working on it right now, right? What we did, this, this store is not live. Um, what we're doing, oh, hot hiccups, sorry. What we're doing right now is we're just using um, AI to create images for us like this. Now, we don't want this when we launch, right? But this was just me explaining to the store owner, I want a picture that looks like this here. Now, it doesn't have to look exactly like that. It doesn't even look close. I'm just getting her the idea. Like, I want pictures because this is the grandparent gift company, right? I want pictures of kids giving grandparents presents, right? And then, you know, I think I think I did a variety of them to show diversity, right? So people of different ages, people of different genders, people of different ethnicities, all that kind of stuff, right? So we're just using the stock for, or the, the AI-driven photography to come up with ideas so that they can go off and do their photo shoots, right? Because even though this is a very generic image, it's really, really hard to find stock photography that specific to the case you want, which is why you're going into, you know, Photoshop and, you know, putting things together, but you can just tell it's, it's inauthentic. Now that might be fine. You know, the photos you're doing might be fine on your, um, privacy page, right? If you have a header on that, I don't remember if you do or not. It might be fine if you did it there, but on your, when I come here, right? And you don't need a home link, by the way, if you've got this, this one here, right? But when I come here, right, this photo, should be more, it should be your most professional photo of all, right? Period. Um, and it's not at the moment, right? Um, so at, what you're trying to do in, your, in an e-commerce store is you're trying to establish trust. And it's really hard, right, to do, especially in the beginning, because, you know, there's, there's 15 different things you can do to establish trust, and each one of them takes time and energy, right? You can't do them all. But some of the things that you're not doing that are easy to do to establish trust is actually put a face to it. Talk about the humans here, right? Not just the dogs. Uh, you could show a phone number, right? So when I go to the contact page, if I see a phone number, I, I feel like, you know, I'm not going to call these people, but they'd let me call them. I feel more confident about that, right? You could show that you're in the United States. Um, so I see, oh, it's an American company. They're, they only ship to America. They make it in America. You could also do, you know, if you're manufacturing these yourself and you're in America, you want to say made in USA is a product seal on your pages, right? Um, you can also have that uh, Instagram feed on the homepage, right? These are all things that, that help build trust. You could also spend, you know, a little bit of energy making one really good banner image um, of your actual art, you know, in a real situation kind of thing. Um that's, that's the stuff, you know, how do you build the trust? Because forget the whole, I don't think you have enough people that want this stuff. I think your niche is too niche, right? Forget that part. Even if you did have a rich, robust, you know, let's say you were targeting um, pickleball players, right? And there's, you know, way more pickleball players probably than English bulldog owners, right? Um, you'd still want to, if you had a broader audience, still do those professional level things to establish that trust. So if I was building a pickleball website and, you know, you, 
you could see, and I didn't talk about me, so I didn't establish my credibility as a pickleball person. Maybe I invented a new paddle because I'm a, you know, a carbon fiber scientist, right? Or maybe I'm a professional pickleball player, and that's why, you know, I, that's my street cred. I, I need to establish that trust regardless of what my niche is um, and, and put myself forward professionally, right? So if I said, oh, I'm a professional pickleball player, and I don't have a single photo of me playing professional pickleball, right? Um, that's a sign that maybe I'm not authentic. Like, so for you as an artist and a craftsman, that's why I want to see pictures of you making these things. Like, like we saw on that Etsy, that video. I love that video on Etsy, right? Because um, by the way, the, the reason, one of the reasons I love that is it also allows people to geek out and, and when they see the process behind things, they're going to go, oh, this is really cool. I didn't know it was made that way. Or, oh, that really feels rugged. Look how thick that metal is kind of stuff. Right here, this looks like, you know, a decal or something that got spray painted on the wall. You don't get that feel for how solid it is and how cool it is kind of stuff. Um, where, you know, if you had a photo or some videos that showed those kind of things, people could geek out over the product. Right now, there's not enough information to really geek out over the product, right? It's sort of like, you know, if you were selling chocolates and, and your photos were just of the box of chocolates without seeing the chocolates, right? You know, I'll give you a real example of that. You know, when you, when you see this close in, you know, you can see the grains of salt on, on the chocolate kind of thing. That, to me, is more appealing and salivating than just, you know, chocolates in the package kind of thing. Um, and Kate here has actually done some really nice photography of making her chocolate. You know, there it is in the box, but then you can also, here's the picture, right? You can see what the creamy inside looks like also, right? And it takes time and energy to make this kind of photography, but it's photography like this for chocolates that's going to help sell the chocolate. Like for you, I think you need some photography that shows that product from the front and the back, mounted on the wall. Does it sit off the wall? Is it a half inch off the wall? Is it, you know, uh, what, what's that look like? How do I hang it? All those kind of things. Um, all right, so hopefully some of the, I'm, I'm closing down now. I, I've gone through, I think, every part of your website. Oh, I'm going to do one more thing. I just want to see your checkout. Um, I don't like this page. I don't like fly out carts personally because um, I like to merchandise on the cart page if I can. Um, but let's see, you got a cart page. Yeah, see here? This looks like a button and it looks brighter than this one. All right, so this one you want me to click on, but I want to click on that one because that says click me, even though it's not. It's, it's a background color, right? Um, so that's, you know, not the best use of a background color, especially when it's right beside a button and they're the same width, right? Um, but here, I just want to see what your checkout looks like. Yeah, see, there's another one where the cropping was just not ideal for you at all. Um, but at least, at least you have a branded cart. That's what I wanted to see. Um, so you got consistency on that side of thing. All right, so that is my feedback. Hopefully some of this was useful for you. Um, like I said, I'm, I just criticize the living hell out of things at this, at, uh, that to me is what you're, you're, you're paying for here. So uh, don't, take, don't take this all too personally. There's a lot of good stuff you've done. I can tell you, you've put a lot of time and energy and thought into what you're building. I'm just trying to help you get to that, that next step. All right, thank you for listening if you've made it this far.